If you've ever wanted to know more about how Sage Oak supports accelerated learners, you are going to love this conversation with Gloria Farewell. She's the parent of a very accelerated 10-year-old, and she's talking all about the different ways that she's able to work with her teacher facilitator to pull together the right curriculum, the right resources, the field trips, the events, and all of the learning opportunities that are available to truly cultivate a personalized learning path for him. It's a really great conversation, and I hope you enjoy this podcast. Well, welcome to another episode of The Sage Studio. I'm Tiffany Webster, and today I am so grateful to be joined by one of our own Sage Oak parents. This is such a treat. Gloria Farewell is here today to talk all about her experience with her son and their story of what they are um, learning in Sage Oak and why Sage Oak is a program that works for them. So Gloria, welcome. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Okay, so tell us a little bit about you and about your son and your family. How did you come to find Sage Oak? We moved about two and a half years ago from the East Coast. My son is in grade four, nine years old, turning 10 in a few weeks. During his preschool years, I was searching and trying to understand all the different teaching approaches that there are. Waldorf, Montessori, nature-based schools. I wanted him to learn language, Chinese, when he was really young in the developmental years. So he was also in a Chinese immersion preschool, but that was not doing the whole child. I'm taking care of all his needs to be outside in nature, or he's very uh, much a hands-on learner. So the Montessori approach was learning math through blocks instead of sitting there reading a book. During that process, that's when I was really just amazed at how many different approaches to learning there really are. And there's so many more. For kindergarten, he went to a public school. We were in a small town outside metropolitan New York City. Okay. So the, the class size was small. It was 15 kids with a teacher and a teacher aide. She was an amazing, perfect experience for my son because she was bubbly and happy, loved her kids. I got really involved in the school, class mom, PTA, everything that I could to try to just be there and be a part of my child's education and learning and life. Grade one came, nothing but good things to say about that school, but I felt like there was more after seeing all these other approaches. So I went back to looking at the Montessori private school or the Waldorf. And I just felt like there was something that I loved about each of them, but I couldn't just commit him to one. And then there was a charter school a friend of mine told me about that was international, focused on world studies. It was a new building with, you know, state-of-the-art facility. And it was supposed to be Spanish immersion. And that's pretty much what I was sold on. So then I went to the school it would be 45 minutes oh, without wow. traffic one way. So wow. I was like committed, super excited for grade one. Sad to miss the elementary school that was in our town. I thought, this is great. He's going to learn Spanish and just be immersed in that. So again, I'm the parent that wants to be a part of the school. So I was trying to become the class mom. The class size was quite huge there surprisingly. And as soon as I was able to get in the classroom, I looked at my child's books and this was like three weeks in, maybe two and a half weeks in. And, and then it kept asking the teacher, is he learning Spanish? Because really that was a, a main part of this, taking him to this mm-hmm. charter school. And it was maybe an hour a week. So I was like, I was devastated. And at this point, I tried to contact the principal and it was just, there was no response. And then I, when I was in the school, I looked at, I took his books out 
and I looked at his work, there was stuff I could easily see as a teacher, like if I, um, like adding or spelling that wasn't corrected. Mm-hmm. And it was just like jumbled mess of just him like scribbling. It was pages of it. And I couldn't believe it. I was just shocked. So I pulled it out the next day because I realized the tension was not there. And not all, there was no Spanish. Searched again with, this is in September of a new school year. So in our town, I looked at, I was still willing to do a drive for a good school. Okay. Most schools were private Catholic school within that radius. And there was a Montessori one. But again, I felt like the Montessori works and it would work well for my child, but I still wanted something in addition to. There's also a Waldorf one, which I love that philosophy, takes them out in nature. It's very heart-centered. But then I wanted, like, it. I just interviewed and you, you just know. So we ended up going to a Catholic private school, small school, um, academically strong. We went into the pandemic. He comes home. This is March of grade one. Comes home with all his books. We go online, like the rest of the country. Right. Okay. And I saw how it was just paperwork after paperwork after paperwork. Um, And then online, staring at, you know, the screen, whether it was doing app learning or online classroom or just all the paperwork and I can handle paperwork. I'm pretty organized that way. Uh But this was like even overwhelming for me, let alone for a six-year-old. Sure. And then so during the move, he he kept that distance learning because it was right during the pandemic. And when I realized he, he started excelling during that time, that was a huge reason for me to look for something that incorporated the being academically strong, self-directed learning, and being able to be hands-on to do projects or go out into nature. And then I found Say Joke, found the website. I loved what the personalized learning program has to offer to be able to choose a curriculum. It's not, you can choose not only just one whole entire curriculum, you could piece it together. So it could be like, if you want science to be not so much um, reading books, it could be more outdoors or doing projects. You can mm-hmm. choose a curriculum for that subject or math. Children learn math differently. He's doing two different math curriculums because I really found, I that he can learn by analyzing after he learns the foundation, analyzing the the problems by Mm -hmm. using math skills after he's been drilled on the math skills. So then that's two different curriculums. Okay, so I'm going to like rewind that because you said so much there that was so good that I want to kind of like take it back and, and reiterate it. So you have... I mean, you found yourself on this quest of like diving into all these different approaches to learning, right? And you started to see, oh, there's great things about the Montessori approach and there's great things about the Waldorf approach and all these different things. And you're trying it. You're trying to go after some Chinese immersion. You're trying to go after some Spanish immersion. I mean, like you're ambitious. Well, let's just say it. We all know it. Like you're an ambitious mom. And kudos to you because you really prioritize being a very present, engaged mom. It was really important for you to make sure that your son was not only in a right program for him, but also in the program that allowed you to be the involved, invested parent that you wanted to be, right? So it sounds like that was really a driving force behind a lot of your decision making. Absolutely. I think being engaged, like I have this little being in my life that I love so much and And the time is so limited. I can't believe he's turning 10. And I know those developmental years when they're young is so much a foundation for really like the rest of his life. And there's 
so many different styles of learning to be able to give a child that I still don't feel like I'm doing enough. And I know that's something that it's very personal mm-hmm. to each family and each person on what you're looking for. Um, but for me, getting engaged and involved, whether it's PTA or class mom or being on the board was extremely important. So when you were able to work with him during COVID, and that's when you really started to go like, wow, okay, there are some things that were happening in the previous school that weren't adding up to you. It looked like there were some holes in in the education or what where you were expecting wasn't happening. So then now you're at home with him, you're working with him during the pandemic. You realize, okay, this crisis distance learning that we're all kind of in the middle of doing isn't going to cut it. But what did come out of it was that you were able to realize like, wow, my son is an accelerated learner. My son needs to have things done in a unique way. I need to be able to draw from these different types of learning approaches in my instruction for him because as you mentioned, you started to find like, oh, okay, he needs maybe multiple approaches to one subject even. And so during that time, you also moved, right? Is that, that's when you moved to California? Yes. Okay. So you moved to California and you're starting to like, now you know what you're looking for. You're moving to California. You're looking for maybe a charter school. You're looking for something that's going to have these different educational approaches. You need a program that's going to allow you to really engage as a parent and get really involved. So how did you start looking for the right school that would provide all of that for you? Google. Google. Okay. (laughs) I think we all do that, right? (laughs) And there are so many charter schools in California. Sejo was the top of my list. And I was so excited when he got accepted because of the ability to be able to curate his education. Mm. And when I took all his books home, when he brought home all his books that one day that I'm sure we all experienced, I was bored looking at it. You know, I want to create that passion for him to learn. And we try to get out to museums, art museums, or airspace museums. There's so many things that we can do to be able to learn. And Sage Oak has been amazing in facilitating that. This week, we're going to the OC Planetarium. Next week, I was really on it this year for signing up. Nice, good. I love that. (laughs) I have a cloth on and I'm ready to sign up. A Walt Disney Concert Hall. Right here, he's an amazing architectural concert hall in downtown LA. So that's exciting. Even for myself, I've only been there once. And then to be able to share that experience with other families and children is, is such a blessing because it's really a lot of exposure to sure. volunteering, beach cleanups, just mm-hmm. getting out there in the community. It gives him time to mix it up rather mm-hmm. than being in this box shuffled around for sure. seven up. So you find you say joke online, you decide like, okay, everything that I'm reading about, everything I'm seeing is starting to match up. You know you don't want him to come home with a big stack of textbooks because that's boring him and it's boring you. You're looking for something that you can curate. That was such a beautiful way of saying you wanted to be able to curate something and give him all these additional enriching experiences on top of what he's learning. So I'm going to spill the tea on this a little bit because I know you have an amazing TF, which is our teacher facilitator, yes. who really has Ever. stepped up to, to help you curate oh. an incredible <laughs> curriculum list for Julian because I know that he really is a unique learner. He's an accelerated learner. As you said, sometimes he needs multiple approaches to even just the one subject. So tell me and tell our listeners about some of the curriculum that you and your teacher have put together for him? We work on moving beyond the page. So classical studies, and now I'm throwing another. Okay, why not? It's your style. (laughs) 
Oh, studying with the classics. And it's also, I don't know if the word is integrated. So with language arts, with science, social studies, those three subjects, if he's learning about nature, he's reading My Silent Mountain. Or if he's learning about history, he's reading Laura Wilder, Laura Ingalls series. Mm -hmm. So it's all connected. And it's instead of being on a computer screen, He's reading a lot of amazing uh, literature, which is classical literature, mm -hmm. which is what I was looking for. And then there's also projects with the science part of moving beyond the page where it's kits that come with it and he can do his science experiments. And it's connecting again with language arts. For math, he's doing Saxon, which has a lot of the, the math drills, repetitive learning to really sink in the math skills. Then he's also doing single core. And now I also have him outside of school doing Russian math. So, cause I find like all three math styles are so different. And to develop that mind mathematically is one of his, he, he loves math. Mm -hmm. And to keep him challenged, I felt that's what I needed to do. Do you think you could do this at other programs? Or do you think there's something special about the way Sage Oak is structured that allows you to do this? Absolutely. It's only Sage because he's technically in grade four, but he's doing five, six. Mm -hmm. And even seven depends on the subject. So I'm able to really piece it together. And when I ask, our TF or teacher, teacher facilitator. <laughs> yeah. We love her, Allison. We've had her for a year and a half. And it's that support system doing something that I'm not a teacher, but she is. And she's gotten to know Jillian. We get to have her for his elementary years. So next year we'll have her again. And she knows where his strengths are, weaknesses. And if I text her, if I text her right now, she'll text me right back. If I say, oh, I, he needs to learn typing. Oh, yes, typing is really important. Here's three different programs that you can see which one works for you. Mm. Or if I've been questioning moving beyond the page, there's at least 20 other, if not more, different curriculums. Say joke, let's parents utilize. Mm -hmm. And She'll go through all that with me again. And I think I've done that to her at least five times. <laughs> what about this curriculum? Right. At first, it's a lot of information for every parent. But then with the TF, they're so knowledgeable. She's so knowledgeable that any question I have for her, she's a, an amazing resource. Mm -hmm. Send me in the right direction and make my choice. Not her choice, not the school's choice, but my choice of what I feel would work for my son. Because at the end of the day, I feel like it's really the parents who know the children. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think that's so great. And I'm so glad you're having such an amazing experience. And I have no doubt that you would, because I do think that's one of the things that, you know, we can really hang our hat on it. Say joke is that we have amazing teacher facilitators to provide that support to parents so that when we say we're personalizing or we're student-centered, like we really are, right? Like our teachers are truly supporting you in personalizing a plan, presenting you with the option as the parent to really say like, hey, these are our qualified programs. Here's why I think it'd be great. Here's why this one would be great. And allowing you as the parent to be involved in, in curating, as you said, that perfect choice for your for your son. And you are truly getting a plan that is all around him. He is at the center of it. And you are choosing the curriculum with the recommendations from the teacher and the support of the teacher to really make a program that works for him. If I may, I'd like to touch on the teacher. Another yeah, point please. with Allison is having the teacher is, it's not homeschooling. It's having, being at a charter school. To be able to have that support group again and the, our own personal teacher for accountability. Because oh, otherwise, yeah. I'm traveling all the time and we'd be, you know, at the beach. So, 
I'm so glad you mentioned that because it is really true. And it's a real distinction, right? When you are part of a charter school, you get the benefit of having this partner, this educational partner who's an expert in the elementary education band, or if it was middle school or high school, they'd be experts in those bands. And you're right. Like they are there coaching you and supporting you and holding you accountable and being like, hey, we're meeting in a few days. Like We got to make sure that you're on track with what you said you would be doing. And you know, that Julian's meeting the goals that he needs to be making in order to get to where he wants to go next. So I'm and so glad you have state that. testing, the standardized testing. So I know he's, he's okay. Like he's still, we're doing the work that needs to be done mm-hmm. at his grade level. And those tests really do help yes. as well. Yeah, they do. And, you know, there's a lot of skills that go along with taking tests that are important too, right? Like you learn how to recall information or you learn how to make great choices when you are given multiple choices to choose from, how to use the process of elimination or how to go back and research text, right? So there's a lot of a lot of value to that. So I'm so glad that, that you brought those points up. That's important. Okay, so I want you to brag a little because I think he's incredible and I just... I want other parents to know what's possible because honestly, I think that, you know, I'm a mom too. And it's like, if we have our kids in a couple activities, we're feeling pretty good about ourselves. Like, okay, good. I'm living a little bit of a balanced life. And, you know, we have some uh, scholastics going on here. We have some activities, but that is not a one size fits all. There are some kids that really thrive within abundance of activity, in abundance of enrichment, in abundance of learning opportunities. And I know that that that's true for your son. So tell us a little bit about that. With the sports, he, there's the sports that change throughout the year, Mm -hmm. tennis, or then there's water polo in the summer, basketball. So those are changing. The sports that he consistently works on, that is almost like, like a, Every every week he practices a few times a week is golf, jujitsu, and sailing. I don't know if sailing is a sport. It's a sport. I think so. That's a hard. That's hard work. That's what that is. <laughs> and then he's continuing Chinese. That's something that a Chinese and Spanish. So I guess that's part of academics as well. Then with music. I play the piano, so I'm able to teach him that. But he wanted two years ago, I think, no, when he started Sage, there must have been a book. He said, I want to learn the violin, mom. Of course. But (laughs) I'm like, I know nothing about the violin. I've been told it's a very hard instrument to get a sound out of. He kept asking me, kept asking me. So he's doing the violin through SAGE with our charter funds. He's part of an orchestra. So that's been super helpful. Uh, that's it. That's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. I'm so glad that he has been able to tap into all of those things and that, again, like he has been able to find a program and you've been able to find a program that did really kind of like braid all of the things together that you were looking for. You've got the opportunity to use different learning styles. You have the opportunity to curate your list of different curriculum. You can use multiple curriculums to teach one subject. You have enrichment opportunities and music, and you're working closely with your teacher to really curate that list, as you said, and tap into all the different events and field trips and those types of enrichment opportunities that are available also. I know that you get objections out there from other moms that you meet who might be looking in and not really knowing a lot about what really is a charter school or why are you doing and how is that working for you? So talk to me just a little bit about some of the objections that you hear or even some of the like myths or standings that you might hear from other parents. I think one would be socialization. Mm -hmm. And I find with all the activities and then Sage Oak also has a lot of events. We try to get to them. He's out like at a museum at least once a week doing the volunteering within the community. We actually do schoolwork unless he's sailing on the weekends. Because on the weekday, I can take him to a museum 
or do community work where it's not as busy and you can sit there and really take it all in. And it, it, it's a day of learning, but it's a field trip. Mm-hmm. So then he can do all his extracurriculars during the week where it's not as hectic also. Oh, kind um, of like a flip-flop schedule. Yeah, I see how that would work. Right. And then through our church or other groups that we find where parents are educating their children the same way. There's so many ways to socialize a child. Mm -hmm. For me, personally, for our family, it's socialization can be good or bad. So depending on, you know, the school and the children, like definition of socialization is being out with kids. If you're really in a box and in a classroom told to be quiet five days a week, that's not necessarily what I personally would want for my son because is that socialization? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, is it? And I also, I, I think it can be scary for families. I'm blessed to have my own business to be able to work from home. And if I'm going out to a meeting or if I even have to travel for work, I take him. And it's been since he's been able to go with me even when he was younger or see me work that is really developing more of an entrepreneurial mindset, Mm -hmm. an innovative mindset, which I can see him at this age, it's actually sinking in, but it's not, I'm not teaching him anything. He's just been able to run with me with how I think or if he hears what I'm doing. And now, of course, I'm showing him the work I do, but that's that socialization. Sure. Yeah. Removing some of that, those barriers from what does a workplace look like? What does work schedule look like? What does the school schedule look like? What does a school <laughs> look like? Right? Like we've removed all the walls. <laughs> all the walls are down. And, you know, all we see is possibility. That doesn't work for everybody, but it's working for you. And it's so great that you are just capitalizing on all of the opportunities that are supporting you in that vision for your family and and what you think is a is a great education structure for your son because that's working for you guys and I love that you're able to use the personalization that Sage Oak offers to create this to create this learning environment this approach to education that does really work for you so what do you say to parents that are like that's good and all but you know, you're still not a teacher. You're just, you know, your mom at home trying to do all these things. What, what do you say to, to parents that feel that way? Honestly, I think it's not rocket science. Mm-hmm. If you can read, you can read a curriculum. And mm-hmm. you, if you don't feel like you can, you're not the teacher because you're, you're guiding the child. And it's, it's the... It's teaching a fundamental skill to my son, which is self-study, self-directed learning, really following what his passion is. When he got into historical fiction, went to the library and grabbed every book we could, and he just loved it, like reading about the history of these fictional novels on top of his schoolwork. So Mm -hmm. it was really him guiding this, and that's the journey I, I, I wanted. I'm reading and making sure it follows along. Or if I don't know, there's YouTube or there's apps. There's so many different ways for a child to learn. I love that. So you really can step into more of that guide role where you're saying, look, I am just here to support my son as he is on this like journey of self-discovery, self-learning, becoming resourceful. I'm guiding him along that way. And then in my back pocket over here, I have this wonderful relationship with the credentialed teacher who is saying, oh, this is the curriculum that you're going to want because that's going to feed that need or that desire. Oh, you know, try this resource. And this is going to be a way that you can tap into to that goal or that interest area. So that's a really beautiful partnership. And like you said, I think it takes a little bit of pressure off too because right. you feel like you don't have to be like, you know, the be all end all of everything you can also too model for him how to be resourceful how to look something up when you don't know it how to find the answers right right 
in the beginning, the first maybe half a year with Allison or Tia, I constantly feel like it, like Allison, am I doing enough? Like, are we falling behind? Like, so she was that honest, almost friend, like she is a friend now Mm -hmm. that said, yes, you're doing great. Because I know she would tell me because there was once where she said, you're falling behind. Okay. So, but but let's, let's look at your plan. What lessons are you going to do? Only because we were, I think it was like October kids free (laughs) month. So we were in San Diego, the San Diego zoos. Yeah. You were, you were drawing a little bit of outdoor learning. A lot of outdoor learning there. So then, you know, it's just having that reassurance is priceless. Yeah. That's so great. So good. Okay. So one last thing, and then we'll finish up because this conversation was so good. What would you tell parents who are on the fence? Maybe they've never considered a charter school before, or they're nervous about the idea of moving from brick and mortar and taking on this role, even as like a guide or as, you know, like the parent guide and working with a teacher. They're nervous about it. They're not quite sure. What would you tell them? That's a good question. I think really look at what the child's doing in the current school and look at the child and each child is different and see if it's meeting the child's academic needs and passions. Is it sparking in the wonder? Because we're not in, we're not in the century of, you know, creating the, the factory workers. We're in the century of innovators. I read a statistic that said the elementary school kids now, 65% of them will not be doing jobs that even exist now. So how are they getting prepared for that? Mm-hmm. Where, where is that coming from? Is it at the school the kids are currently in? Maybe, and if so, that's great. But it's really, again, it's child center, really getting to know your child, getting involved, looking at what they are learning or are not learning. I love that. It's so important. It is. It's like knowing that you have those different choices is so powerful as a parent. And knowing that if you want a program and you want a school that offers you even more empowerment as a parent to get involved, to have more say and more ownership over what it is that your child is learning, how they're learning, and you want that close relationship with a teacher to help guide you through that process, Sejo can definitely deliver that. And I'm so glad that you found us. I am so glad that Julian is one of our students and that he is thriving here. It's really, it's so beautiful to see. I had the honor of getting a chance to chat with him the other day over at the science fair. And he's just so, so inquisitive and curious and excited about learning and excited to share about all of the learning that he's doing and all the activity of his. And he was so excited to tell me about all the different things that he was doing. He felt so proud. And I'm just really um, happy for you as a family that you found Sage Oak where you could live out this dream that you had of, of the education that you wanted to offer your son. So, so incredible. Thank you so so much. I really feel like it's limitless with this program. Well, that's so great to hear. So good to hear. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Gloria. I always love chatting with you. You know, when we talk, we always say we could just do this forever. <laughs> so much more to even talk about, but you really shine a light on, on the program here and the opportunities. I think other parents are going to be really appreciative of that. You made a big impact today. So thank you so much for, for talking with me. We'll do it again soon. Bye.